Please welcome Marius Schiffer from Emteria, who will be talking to us about doing uh, images with macOS I and bringing them to devices with SysUpdate. Yes. Okay, let's get started. So my name is Marius. I work at Emteria. We mainly do Android and not really user system D Linux. Um, it's interesting how much this diverged, uh, but I digress here. But we, at some point, uh, two years ago, we had a need. We needed an, a kind of hypervisor system that executes Android in a VM. <laughs> Sounds kind of strange. It is. But that's what the requirements were. The problem here is that Android is not really that easily portable, even on x86. Uh, it's kind of amazing how far we've come that uh, systems like Ubuntu just run on any x86 PC, right? Uh, people who have tried porting Android, new Android versions to smartphones probably know the pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's get started with the premise. Um, so the task here was we had to have a system that had to be on a Ubuntu basis. Uh, it doesn't have any network or USB access. It has to have live boot. It has to have US updates. So you're probably, probably now wondering how can we have US updates if we don't even have network or USB access. That is all done through Android itself. We only have a control channel and we can share files. So the system is basically closed off. But back to the first thing. Uh, I searched online, yeah, how do I customize a live boot uh, Ubuntu? It mainly yielded complex scripts. Image generation usually is just complex scripts, right? But that was not really reliably customizable. Uh, and then I stumbled up on Make OS I. That was about two years ago. Uh, but first, let's get uh, all the requirements formalized. So, we want self replication. We could build a system that just installs what we want, but then we would have two different systems. What we can do instead is use uh, self-replication. So the system should boot, live boot, from a USB stick, for example. But it should be able to use the exact same image and install itself onto some internal SSD, eMMC, that kind of stuff, which you normally can't access without opening up the hardware. So we avoid system duplication and therefore save space. We have live boot. Uh, we also want secure boot support, so we want to have a full secure boot chain. Uh, we want uh, verity protection, so that the uh, system is protected against corruption and other malicious intentions. And uh, one of the more important requirements, offline signing. So the signing key is, of course, the signing private key is, of course, uh, should, of course, be protected. And the signing should be done in a separate environment that is protected as much as possible. We also don't want to uh, edit scripts every time, uh, so we, we want some configurable tool uh, and just have some extendability in case we have to further customize it for different customers, so we don't want to duplicate the script every time. All right. Like I said, I stumbled up on Make OS I. Uh, Make OS I is already a little bit older. I think first version was released in 2017. But uh, I think in 2021 or 2022, uh, development picked up fast when uh, Dan and Jörg uh, uh, started joining in, in the project. And Make OS I is a pretty cool, pretty nifty tool. It means less scripting. We have a modular configuration. And uh, it already fulfills some requirements. It has first-class support for Ubuntu, so you can build a U working Ubuntu with it. And it has active development. I will only uh, talk a little bit about some possibilities. There are some more talks coming. Uh, I think the talk after mine is also about MakeOSI that showcase more possibilities. 
All right, yeah, make OS I. It's pretty easy to configure. You just write a simple configuration, distribution Ubuntu, bootable, yes, format this, secure boot, yes, and well, you, you have a bootable image that works on uh, most x86 PCs. It's a little bit more, of course. Uh, you need at least some packages, and a kernel would also be pretty good if you actually want to boot it. Um, and it also has a few add-ons that you can, for example, um, not only have a full GPT image, but you can also split the partitions. This will be very important later on, because for updates, it's not that easy to just overwrite the whole disk if you're running from that disk. That usually ends in disaster. Um, with this, we also have secure boot support. With the little caveat, uh, we of course need to create a key, and if we actually want it to be secure, uh, we also have to enroll the key in the UEFI. All right, now, uh, next requirement. We want to make it image based, we can later do updates. Uh, easiest way, which is also usually the default with MakeOS I, is it just uses uh, systemd repart definitions. Repart is also uh, very configurable, and very declarative, so uh, not a lot of scripting is required, but you can use uh, well defined config files. And as you can see there, uh, you just type in partition, type root, you specify the format. And with make OS I, you can then specify what files you want to have copied. In this case, I just want to have one root partition. It just copies everything except uh, the boot partition. And it automatically creates a verity partition. So now we also have this done. Uh, one nifty thing that systemd also has, verity of course means uh, the system is read-only. Um, if you try booting uh, Ubuntu, that is, uh, which, which, uh, whose root FS is read-only, it will not work, it will not fully boot up. I think after some services timeout it, it might, but it usually doesn't work. But systemd, of course, has a feature for that. We can just edit uh, the CMD line, add a little line, systemd volatile overlay, and it creates an overlay FS over the root FS. So this is basically a RAM disk. Any changes are lost, but this boots up without any complaining. And just like that, we already have an image based OS. So how does the booting actually work? Uh, this was something that amazed me when I discovered it. Uh, thanks to the UA API specifications, booting is actually also pretty automatic. Uh, usually you might have had to specify an FS tab, you had to specify uh, the root partition in, in the CMD line. But with systemd you don't really have to do that. So it just works, I would say. What actually happens is uh, when you create such an image, the UEFI first boots systemd boot. Systemd boot selects the UKI. And because the UKI, uh, the unified kernel image, which is actually the kernel itself, it is the init RAM FS and it is the SIMD line, already contains everything necessary, uh, it can just start the UKI. It basically just gives execution to the UKI. Uh, the Verity setup is also completely done automatically. You don't need any special crypt tab or anything else. You just specify root hash um, in the UKI. And the root hash actually is split into two, can be split into two parts conveniently because it's 128 bits. Uh, and it can be uh, 256 bits and it can be split into two, oh. It can be split into two parts, which are exactly two UUIDs long. And with this, you already have the root partition and the root verity partition defined. Very nifty. Next up, uh, systemd also includes GPT auto discovery. So if you have any other uh, partitions, for example, a var partition, or you might have, in our case, an SRV partition, just using the type UUID uh, specifies its mounting place. You don't need any FS tab entry. It will just mount this automatically. In my case, this worked flawlessly. 
almost on the first try. All right, next topic. Uh, I was interested in this because I read it, I think, in one of the first documents on Make OS I, which is self replication. Um, this is pretty easy to implement because we are uh, using a variety protected system. We don't do any changes, so we can actually just use system repart to one to one. Uh, transfer the partitions from the booting USB stick, for example, and just transfer it over to the uh, internal storage. And this will also just work. And you can even change the definitions a little bit. We needed AB partitions, add a B partition, uh, pretty configurable. There's one big caveat here, though because we're using the root hash to specify which partitions we are booting from, and the root hash itself specifies it using these uh, partition UUIDs, these have to stay the same, because the, the root hash is in the unified kernel image, the unified kernel image is signed, we can't change the CMD line. So if we do the self-replication technology, we end up with uh, two par or four partitions, and each pair has a uh, has the same UUID, which kind of defies the purpose of uniquely identified IDs, right? Uh, you can work around that by removing the USB stick, but this is not optimal. Uh, we will talk a little bit about that later when we come to the actual signing topic. Uh, Make OS I is also pretty nifty in case of if you want to extend it. So if you want an extra binary in some images for some of our customers, we need special images which uh, include some extra drivers. This could also be kernel drivers, for example. You can just add a configuration file. You don't have to duplicate the entire configuration. You can choose a profile and build that. And it's also very compatible with uh, CI builds. Uh, we could also do context or sysext, uh, but we don't really use that yet. All right, next exciting topic is uh, updates. For updates, we use systemd sysupdate because it kind of seemed obvious, and uh, it does the heavy lifting we need. So in our case, we uh, already deliver the update file, the partition, and the UKI. It's always uh, three parts, the partition, the UKI, and the Verity partition. So we need to update three partitions. But as we use an AB setup, we also need to select where to write that partition. And uh, of course, we don't have infinite slots, but just two. So we need to discard uh, the, right uh, the right partition and the right UKI. Uh, system the sys update uh, can already do that with one just one config file per part. So in this case, we can just say uh, we're protecting the version we are currently running, because that would be dumb to delete the partition we are currently running. Uh, and uh, this update, system needs this update will just choose the correct version. And with the rest, we just specify the path. And uh, this update can gain all other information just uh, from the file names. In this case, it will gain the actual version from the file name, and it will gain the, um, the partition UUID from the file name. And with this, uh, we have updates. And this update can also do other stuff, uh, like um, making a boot counting work. Uh, this involves um, putting the boot count into the UKI name. And boot counting basically uh, means that we can make sure a uh, system actually works. And if it doesn't work for a specified number of times, it, or it doesn't boot and marks itself as working, we can roll back to an older version, which is also one of the points why we do AB updates. Uh, normally, this update needs to, be, uh, it needs to be invoked somehow, and this is often a missing part. Uh, in our case, we have an external control channel which invokes the update. And it's as easy as just specifying uh, where the sysupdate definitions are. System D sysupdate does the rest. And it also notifies you if the update was actually successful. 
Now we come to one of the harder parts. Uh, I already talked about how we wanted to do offline signing. Uh, ideally, the signing uh, should be done on a secure device. Not every developer should have access to the private key. That <laughs> would be covered the security flaw. Ah, um, so uh, we want to do this on a secure device. The execution environment needs to be locked down. So ideally, it's in an unprivileged container on some secure device. But currently, Make OS I needs uh, uh, does the signing during its build. So uh, the current Make OS I that I use still needs capabilities. Coming up uh, in the next Make OS I version is that it only needs user namespaces. Uh, but unfortunately, in our signing environment, we can't even have these capabilities. So I was thinking, how can we work around that? Uh, systemd repart does not actually need any capabilities because it basically just does a little bit of file mangling. So what we let uh, make us I do is basically output an unsigned image, so an unsigned UKI and a full tarball of the entire image. And then we can just use systemd repart to actually generate the image. Then we have the root hash. And then we can put the root hash in the UKI. So the problem here is this, that the root hash, we only knew the, know the root hash once the partition is generated. Um, but we need to put it into the unified kernel image and then sign it. So in this case, we avoid this by uh, only creating the image in the actually secure enclave. Um, but uh, make us already outputs a full UKI. So how do we resign it? For this, I actually create a, created a new uh, command for UKI called sign, which basically only resigns the UKI, remeasures the PCR values, and it can uh, append a CMD line, which is required so we can uh, put the root hash in. Uh, we want to do everything else in. Uh, in make OS I because we don't want to rely on having to lock the, the full kernel around. We don't want to lock the init RAM FS. Uh, download it. We don't want to download it in the secure enclave and we don't want to uh, download the systemd stub in the enclave. All right. So this is not very flexible. Uh, the root hash in the CMD line, uh, we have to do quite a, quite a bit of stuff to do this. Carrying the entire image is also not uh, optimal because it can be very large. Ubuntu is like eight gigabytes now. Uh, so the idea was to add a Verity signature partition, which would replace that. Then we can keep the current UKI. It can even be distribution pre-signed. But the problem is if we don't have the root hash in the UKI, in the CMD line, we don't know what, what partition to select. And another problem is that the Verity signature partition, last I checked, uh, can be generated with systemd repart, but it's not yet read. Um, and there's still some discussion uh, that needs to happen for uh, selecting correct, the correct partition can happen. All right. Yeah, uh, as you can see, this works. Uh, it's uh, unfortunately still rough around some edges. But I'm pretty happy that we now can do create OS images with less scripting and more configuration. And next for me here is uh, implementing PCR me measuring next. Uh, also, thanks to the Make OS I maintainers for making this uh, uh, so great, uh, especially Jörg and Dan. Well, thanks, Marius, for this talk. And do we have any questions? Uh, I just wanted to, not really a question, um, I just wanted to say like uh, regarding the, the selection of the root uh, um, uh, and taking the signature data um, into account, uh, we discussed this a couple of times and I think mm. everybody agrees that we should do this, but it's also not as trivial as it might sound um, because the kernel and the root file system have some, typically have uh, quite some relation mm. with each other in regards to user lib modules, right? Like so. Yeah. You typically cannot completely freely mix uh, UKI with arbitrary root file systems. 
because they will simply not contain the right drivers that match mm. that kernel. So uh, um, if this actually should be useful in the general case, right? I mean, you can get around this by simply saying, uh, I know my systems, I'm going to compile all drivers in, and uh, the problem doesn't mm. exist because you have no usable modules. Um, but uh, otherwise, it probably means that people have to start shipping usable modules as a as a sysx or something, so that the that this is not on the root of So I don't know. Like I'm, I think it would make sense to have this. Um, all I'm saying is. Uh, it's probably in practice uh, more difficult than it sounds because yeah. you need to arrange how you build this system like this. Uh, to answer that uh, slightly, uh, on uh, embedded devices we build, uh, we deliver modules on a separate partition. We build kernel and modules and uh, put it uh, to, to one, uh, let's say we call it image, it's a tar, tar GZ file and it's uh, device specific. And uh, we build the root file system and uh, other parts separately. And they are, you know, from init uh, RD <coughs> mounted and, uh, and combined. We, we don't use all these UKI uh, stuff yet. But uh, that's how we handle uh, this, uh, this issue. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that you work with Android. Uh, so I was wondering if you tried to uh, build an image with MKOSI for ARM64 and maybe U-Boot. I don't know how it plays. No. Uh, for other architectures, we uh, actually port the Android, yeah. So this is all in case, uh, this is part of Intel's project Celadon, and it's built for, for virtual machines, specifically. Um, regarding the signing of the, the Inverity root hash, uh, we thought about that uh, for our embedded use cases as well, and the end decided against it because it allows mix and match attacks between the kernel mm -hmm. and the root file system. And uh, yeah, that was a uh, too big risk for us, so one should uh, look out for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think in our case we would also always ship, uh, do a versioning for both kernel and the file system and always ship them together. Uh, regarding the sysupdate underscore empty partition, uh, it, you mentioned that you have UUID collisions when you create that partition. Uh, do, you, do you copy data into there? Because that partition should really be empty, and Repart will generate uh, a one-off UUID that will actually be unique. Yeah, and we don't have the collision for the B partition, but we we start with a root and a root variety partition, and we copy the entire data, right? And we also copy uh, the UKI, which includes the root hash. So the partitions we copy also need to have exactly the same UUID. The B uh, partitions are empty, but... Uh, copy from where to where? From the USB stick we have booted from. Okay, so you're, you're in deploying yeah. the image We're onto, a, onto a different disk then. The yeah. UUIDs still should not collide. The GPT auto discovery should uh, stick to one disk. Uh, you might have found a bug there. Yeah. Like in, in which sense um, uh, collide? Like. So uh, after the installation, you have the same UUID on, for one partition on the USB stick right, and right. on the internal storage. So, and if you then boot and specifically select the internal storage in the UEFI to boot and still have the USB stick in, in a 50-50 chance, depends on the enumeration, it will actually so, select the wrong, Verity setup will select the wrong partition. So, uh, um uh, that's interesting, but like for the like the the discovery of the root uh, file system is inherently different from finding the other ones. For the root file systems, uh, we basically, if you use at least SD boot and SD stop or something, we look at the yeah. But there's a problem. I mean, so, so we 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 find the the ESP that we're booted from um, mm. by its UUID. So if you copy the like the, the assumption is basically that that if you uh, copy your OS to a new new mm. hard disk, you would at least change the UID of the ESP, because uh, that's how we can recognize it after boot um, the, the the disk basically we have been booted from, and then from that point on we should only link to that, right? Like because if we look for the root, 
file system on the same disk as the ESP, and we look for var, blah, 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 home, whatever you might have split mm -hmm. off on the same disk as, as a root file system, right? So there should actually be a, a, a reasonably secure chain um, for the auto discovery. Uh, yeah, so uh, the ESP, of course, gets a new UUID. It's a new file system because it's not verity protected. Uh, but uh, when I tested it, uh, sometimes uh, the, so we booted from the internal storage, uh, was successful, uh, an additional partition var or SRV was actually mounted in the correct, uh, the correct partition was mounted on the same device, of course, but the uh, Verity setup selected the wrong device. So, so uh, I, this is the problem. Like, uh, okay, I don't have barely any time anymore, but uh, uh, I just <laughs> wanted to say that, uh, like, you know, like, there's this disk sex thing that was, uh, mm. came up in the kernel. So I added, I changed uh, the GPT auto discovery stuff to mount, like, to reference all the devices that it deals with um, uh, from disk sec. So basically, yeah. when you found the root thing, then we'll, and, and disk sec is like this kernel number that is assigned to every block device as it shows up and whenever the media changes in that, yeah. right? So uh, by referencing block devices with that disk sec, we basically have a, we suddenly have for the first time have a unique handle to that media. Mm. Um, um, and if, yeah, so actually that probably shouldn't exist anymore. Not in current system versions, no, right? It, we're not using GPT. I, I think the issue is we're not using GPT auto discovery if you say root hash equals on the command line. And because we're not using GPT auto discovery, we don't care which ESP we've booted from, and thus we will pick the wrong one. I think that's the bug. Yeah. Okay, thanks Marius for this great talk and, this, and everybody here for this great discussion. We have to go on because there's the next Make OSI talk. <laughs>